Good evening and welcome to the Albanian Evening News. I'm Peter Zimbiki and here are your headlines for February 14th, 2011. Prime Minister Sally Berisha considered the resolution approved by the PPE through which the attempt of the leader of the Socialist Party, Edi Rama, to come into power by force. The PPE resolution said that on January 21st, 2011, the leader of the Socialist Party, Edi Rama, organized more than five hours of protests and violent attacks against the Council of Ministers. The resolution mentions that there is a tense situation between the government and the socialist opposition and stresses that the stability of the Albanian democracy is essential for the ambitions of Albania towards membership in the European Union. The PPE hails the efforts and reforms undertaken by the Democratic Party and Prime Minister Sally Berisha in preparing for EU membership. The PPE punishes the use of violence and tactics that Edi Rama used in the protests and calls for the party leader to abstain from further acts of violence. The PPE resolution also states that the May 8, 2011 elections will not be postponed. The resolution is finalized with a request made to all European Union members to support the Albanian government with the reforms to come. Unable to pass a law that needs a majority in Parliament, the majority officially announced its initiative for restraining the immunities of deputies according to the German model where a deputy can give their immunity willingly through a press conference. Prime Minister Sally Berisha said that the initiative was a very important decision in the interest of democracy, responsible governance, and the fight against corruption. This decision means that those who give up immunity will be treated the same as an ordinary citizen. Sally Berisha said that although Albania was once in the top 10 of corrupted governments, the country is now in the bottom 10, excluding the municipality of Tirana, which is ranked among the top three most corrupted municipalities on the planet. Prime Minister Sally Berisha was the first to sign the declaration that limits his immunity. Today, U.S. Ambassador to Albania Alexander Arvizu delivered a report at the General Directorate of Police regarding the events surrounding the protest of January 21st. Thank you very much for that uh, comprehensive um, examination of our many areas of cooperation established over, over the past 10 years. I would like at this time to explain that uh, one primary purpose of my visit today was to deliver to General Director Bergai um, an expert report prepared by my ISITAP colleagues at the American Embassy. This report is an examination into the circumstances of the January 21st demonstrations. Specifically, and it is limited to an examination of the state of preparations by the Albanian State Police for the demonstrations as well as their conduct during the um, main phase of the demonstration. In reviewing this report, it is clear to me that the Albanian State Police had a well-developed operational plan to deal with an organized demonstration and that they executed it accordingly. Due to the extreme violence on January 21, Police Director Bergai initiated extraordinary command and control procedures that enable police forces to contain the situation as much as possible, considering also the police's very limited resources. In his speech, Arvizu said that state police at January 21st's demonstration were acting appropriately and praised their calmness in the face of persistent attacks. Arvizu also demanded that the organizers of the acts of violence should face justice and is requesting an investigation on the matter. During today's regulatory and mandate council meeting, the immunity of Deputy Ilir Meda, based on the request of the prosecutor's office, was discussed. 
Meta mentioned facts and acts of expertise that prove the total manipulation of the video registered from former Minister of Economy Dritan Prifti. Meta stressed that the request of the prosecutor's office addressed to the parliament for the suspension of immunity of Meta is belated and the request is based only on the video broadcasted in one of the privately held TV stations, thus disregarding the acts of expertise. Meta referred to the expertise done by the U.S. that they cannot clearly hear the audio, while the general prosecutor seems to consider only the fact that Meta is part of the video. While Meta put into Parliament's disposition the expertise done by an Italian that concluded that the video was manipulated. Meanwhile, the Speaker of the Assembly said that the Regulatory and Mandate Council will soon come up with a decision on this issue. Ex-Albanian Foreign Minister Edmund Hajinasto said the main priority for 2011 remains Albania's membership in the European Union. In the annual analysis of the foreign ministry, Hajinasto spoke of diplomacy during the last year where he highlighted and praised visa liberalization and Kosovo's independence. Hajinasto talked about economic diplomacy and its recent growth and about the influx of foreign visitors in the region. For the current year, Hajinasto said major objectives are increasing efficiency in foreign policy, especially in diplomatic activities and reforming foreign service. Despite continuous appeals and alarms, the phenomena of turning Tirana into concrete jungle continues with the same rhythm, thus threatening the life of more than one million inhabitants of the capital city. Deputy Minister of Environment Aaron Minieri said for the Albanian public television that the phenomenon of urbanization has negatively affected the quality of air that the inhabitants of Tirana breathe every day. Only a few months ago, the Public Health Institute published alarming figures about the quality of air that it exceeds threefold the maximum pollution level permitted and referred to the data of the World Health Organization. February has started with heavy traffic in the capital as a result of closure for reconstruction of main un entry routes through the center. At around 7.30 a.m. today, the main traffic hub in the capital, Zogu Easy, was completely filled with traffic. The road connects the arrivals from areas outside Tirana with two arms of the ring and the center of town. Another reason for the traffic is the Derisi Road closure, which is also a national axis. Police have taken measures to ease traffic, although it seems impossible. Prime Minister Berisha, along with his wife, Miss Liri Berisha, has chosen Valentine's Day to celebrate the birthday of two of her grandchildren, Dahlia and Alma, who turned 7 and 10 a few days ago. In a peaceful atmosphere, under festive decor, sounds of music and the smell of traditional cakes filled the room. Dalila and Alma took wishes from family, friends, and teachers in first and fourth grade of the school where they attend classes. The classes being introduced to Mr. Berisha was particularly special to the children. Moving away from official engagements to make room for this family joy, Sally Berisha wished his granddaughter's love for parents, for friends and for each other. Berisha also met with students from secondary schools in the capital whom he wished a happy Valentine's Day and gave each of them a rose. Berisha talked about the importance of love and said it is a magical and great human emotion that should always be celebrated. Those are all the stories for February 14th, 2011. Stay tuned tomorrow night for another edition of the Albanian Evening News. Good night and happy Valentine's Day.